recently I've been giving this image of sitting inside a room, the room of being, and you're alone. And uh, in front of you is a window. And through this window you can see the movements of the world, of the mind and time and change and forms coming and going. Your emotions are there also on the screen. You can see it as a screen or as a window that you're looking through. Everything is coming and going, including your self-image. Your living self-image is also part of it. And this is the part we miss, because sometimes you imagine it's your self-image that's looking through the window. But let your self-image, or the idea, ego identity, be also something observable, you see. And uh, you're observing not only with your eyes, but with your entire being. And like this, you can just remain quiet. Because seeing happens. It's not that you're doing seeing. The seeing is happening like that. And you find that if you don't uh, log into what you are looking at, if you don't try to control and have a desire and design of how things should play, you'll find yourself in a great place of peace. Let the world flow. Your body and your actions become part of this flow also. But you pay attention even to the fact that you're paying attention. And you'll find a quietness inside your being. And spend a little time with this. Your unassociated presence can you all follow this or not? Yes. And so when you look like this, just keep looking, a quiet looking, not a busy looking. Like looking, looking out from a place of stillness. Hmm? And what will happen is that the world that seems so chaotic drifts further away in some way. So it's not so claustrophobic for you. And an amazing power arises inside your room of being that fills your heart with peace and a deep contentment and the joy is with you. And all this can happen in the place of minutes. Not asking you to go and change the world. Nobody succeeds in a way. We make, uh, we make uh, activities and all of this and everybody looks, oh, you made such a big building or you done such a... But actually, you have not necessarily contributed to a, a real place of happiness or peace. And the world is desperate for peace. Peace is not something you can write in a treaty on a piece of paper. It begins with you. And you who come to satsang are being blessed with a tremendous opportunity, actually, to stop running around looking for more and more experiencing. But to find the very root of experience, the heart of being. And I'm not giving any pictures about it, because there's no pictures there. And to rest in the silence of your limitless Self. And it may appear to the mind that is always searching for adventures, that that's boring, I need to go, I love the dynamic life. And it feeds on dynamic activities. And actually, nothing is wrong with dynamic activities. Nothing. But until you clarify your being in the way that I'm showing you, and find your undivided Self, only then will you earn the true eyes that see the world in a true way. And you will stop molesting the world and yourself. So I feel in my heart that uh, there's a great joy in even being able to share this, because there was time I could not share it. Because the ears were not ripe, and the heart's not ripe to hear these things. So more and more in each one of you, in each one, this message is uh, being announced inside your heart, just to follow and pay attention. Stop making excuses. Oh, it's so hard. I can't meditate. And nobody's given you some course in meditation to sit by yourself. Sit within yourself. And stop.
stop participating so much in projecting a world that your mind is creating and creating desires to want to see because you have never been satisfied. We are already living in many answered prayers and it's never enough for your mind. Your self, your true self, is before prayers are made. And to come more now, to, to come to that recognition. Recognition is the most potent force. And then abiding in that recognition. And the fruit of that recognition. Simple like that. And what what is the victory? That persistence, a little discipline, and the urge to be free. If you have inside your heart the urge to be free, that's already a mighty gift. Stop giving attention to the bitterness of the mind. And to know in your heart that you tasted birth for this. And no one here has ever been separate from God. It's the mind that gives us this feeling. And because we give so much attention to our minds, projections. So if you can follow this and uh, be with this, uh, your presence will announce this, that this is landed, you, not your lips. Because we are very quick to say things with our mouth and say, yeah, I understand. Oh, I know I am the self. I know I'm not the ego. These are very, uh, by themselves as words, they're not enough. But when they come out of uh, a real realization in your heart, a very simple thing. But its power is enormous. And actually, I would say, I'll take the step to say, every human being is in search of this, but not aware of it. You think it's going to come with a great job, or with fame, or with riches, or with good friends, or in a relationship, or whatever it is. And nothing is wrong with these things at all. But if you set them to be the goal of your existence, you'll never find peace. Peace is the fragrance of your being. Nobody can give you peace. At best, mm. an awakened being can help to remove the things that seem to clutter or to veil the peace. Peace is revealed, unveiled. It's not created, because one's nature is uh, synonymous with peace and joy, and love. Don't forget, and uh, an equanimity in the beingness. And may what we share really is a seed that keeps sprouting and bearing fruit in you. You don't have to become anything at all. In the play, we can play becoming. Just like as children, remember we used to play, you know, I want to be a Bobby, I want to be a soldier, I want to be a nurse, and we can play. But none of these things you are. Before the game even began, you are, yeah. When you know this, you may enjoy the game or experience it without becoming a victim of it. So today, I look upon you with great honour and respect, because I am able to look at you in the eyes, because I do not look upon you upon as merely a person, but as an embodiment of God, actually. And these may seem very, very rare words to hear in this world at this time. But nevertheless, it is totally true. But you must have the eyes to see it and the heart to appreciate it. And this is why I, 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 I bless that the Sangha uh, grows in this love and in this care for one another and for. We don't want to be exclusive. For me, your heart must be all inclusive. That doesn't mean you must go out and grab people and hug them and kiss them. But you must bless and, and, and have a respect for who they are, even if they are not aware of it. 
And if you have that attitude in you, it will percolate somewhere. More than this you need not do. And then unfold in your actions what feels normal and spontaneous for you, which is arising from a pure heart of awareness. Like that. So I'm happy to have a moment or so just in quietude. And may what is being shared uh, become mm, assimilated and digested, and as I said, also to combust into pure being or spirit, if you want to use this word. Because why do we even take moments of silence? Because sometimes the mind is embarrassed by silence. Not the true mind, because the true mind and heart, they come from the same place. But the person, ego, is uncomfortable, because in the silence, it cannot hide. But when I say you are blessed, I don't mean you are especially or more than others blessed, but you are in a place where you can really receive your blessings. Where does the blessings come from, even? Because your heart is open to it, it releases it, that power in here. And uh, so that the things that you hear will ferment in you. They won't just dissipate like other things in the mind. When you hear things that are recognized in your heart, they don't just disappear. They are like seeds that uh, sprout and bear real fruit. In the world, this fruit is called love and respect, joy and peace. And how much uh, I pray in my heart that it could become contagious in the world again. You know, Mm -hmm. because look what can happen if you you know whatever can happen here multiplied so many times it could happen. I am not holding out because it's not my way to say oh made the whole world. Why not because mm, I want to change the world or so, but only to as far as it is the capacity is there that human beings wake up to what they are. It's not about making more beautiful temples. It's just what we are. It's enough. Because one time we must all leave this plane, from the physical to the non-physical plane. When you might have seen that I say, you only live once, but it is forever. I don't mean necessarily in this form, because this form is not only you. It belongs to us. It's our, it's our vehicle. But uh, our being is... forever and ever. But the quality of our experiencing also depends on how we are even now.